Well, good morning, everybody, good day, day. and good morning, Dave. Uh, welcome back to Theology Thursday, where we delve into theology. Yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it, Dave, that's missing in a lot of modern churches. Oh, good theology. Yeah. Open the Bible. Let's have a talk about what it actually says about some controversial topics. And uh, and so last week was good. I hope you enjoyed that. Can you even lose your faith? That, that was controversial for some. Yeah. yeah. And for, I, I, I was talking to somebody just last night who said they had to listen to it a couple of times because, you know, it was it was revolutionary for them. They were grow, they, they grew up with a very legalistic uh, you know, church and a very legalistic paradigm, uh, and they've you know they've thought, wow, this is uh, this is great. You know, the, the the concept of of salvation by grace that being so strong and ironclad, as long as it's the real thing, of course, as it's got to be the genuine article in the first place. But once it is, you your salvation secure. Absolutely. Hey, there, there was a um, a very famous document called the the Westminster Confession of Faith. Uh, written in the, the mid 1600s, um, and I, I guess to to a certain degree, it's a bit like the the two big creeds, you know, the Apostles mm. and the Nicene Creed, uh, and it provided what we might term the, the broad basis of uh, Protestant mm. theology. Uh, there's a, there's a few things that you know mm. th there's some area of debate, but generally it, it's regarded as is a particularly good document well um, i think so i mean i'm i'm half anglican i grew up <laughs> anglican i was you know confirmed in the anglican church and uh and uh so yes well well familiar with the westminster confession thank you and it it, it divides the laws of mm. moses into um, to three to three broad categories mm. um there's the moral civil and ceremonial um and contends that only the moral laws mm. which include things like the, the Ten, Ten Commandments, commandments yeah. obviously, um, and and those commandments that are specifically repeated in the mm. New Testament, only those directly apply to Christians today. And that's because the ceremonial pretty, law would have been purely yeah, Jewish, yeah, pretty reasonable uh, yeah. assumption. Um, but there are there are fundamental laws um, mm. that uh, they're, they're laws of God that may not be included in the Westminster list, but well, yeah. they are universal laws, laws. Um, that are, are divine and, and absolutely immutable. Cannot change they them. Cannot change The law them. of gravity. Yeah, well, that's, that's it. You know, um, so the law of gravity obviously can't just be changed. Um, there are some laws like that that are absolutely immutable and some of those are to do with moral foundations yeah. uh, uh, as well. Um, and one of those is the soul that sins shall die. Mm. Um, it simply states the reality of the consequence of sin, and that yeah. consequence is death. Yeah. It has been from the point of creation and remains so to this day. Mm. So these laws, if you like, um, which we'll get onto in a moment, they're, they're not laws that you keep or break. These, no. are, these are, are laws that are established reality so yeah. like gravity you can't keep or break gravity it's, it's just it's just yeah. is that's it is law, what it is yeah. and that's what these are so like. this is really the law of sin and death that is exactly what it is mm. uh, the law that god has established and um, we have no contribution to it we, we can't um, uh, get to approve it we can't no. reject it um, it's in place regardless of our opinion mm. um, or our actions it's like um the, the guy that says he doesn't believe in trains, well, that's okay. But if he sits on the track, he's still going to get run over. Yeah. Um, and you, your belief is not going to change that. So if we sin, the law of sin and death is applied to our sin. And the just and the clearly enunciated consequence of our sin is that it will bring death. That's Romans. The wages of sin is, is death. Is death. So it's, it's a bit like that, the law of gravity, whether we like it or not. When we throw things up in the air, they're going to fall to the ground. Yeah. If we sin, we will die. That's the consequence. Hmm. So uh, this law is not one that, that we um, particularly can debate whether it's right or wrong. It's really a statement of consequence. Hmm. The consequence so, yeah. is sin. Statement of fact. Yeah. This is how it is, people. And it is really that is that is the basis. That's where you start. Uh, again, you know, I was talking to um, last night. We were doing crystal clear, and uh, and we were talking about you know the gospel. And I said, you know, you ask most people, 
uh, who, not churchgoers, not professing Christians, but most people, um, if there is a heaven, uh, if there is a God, do you think you'll go to heaven? And most people say, sure, yeah, why? Yeah, of course I would. And you ask them why, and they will invariably, most people, not everybody, but most people will invariably say, well, I'm, I'm a good bloke. I'm trying to be a good person, you know? And, and, uh, and so that bubble has to be burst. Uh, before they can hear the good news, the people have to be aware of the bad news. Because otherwise, you tell somebody, hey, Jesus loves you and you're going to heaven. They're going to go, well, why wouldn't he? I'm a good bloke. I'm going to heaven. You know what? There's no great gratitude. So you've got people who, prefer, even some people that profess Christianity, they never understood the death part. They yep. never understood this law. So they're not grateful. They just think, oh, fair enough. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Um, but if they understand first what we're talking about here today, if people have that, that gravity of, of desperation, oh, I am going to die. I'm not going to go to heaven because I might think I'm a good bloke, but God might not because I've told lies, yeah. I've stolen, I've been greedy and jealous and proud and lustful and all of these things. Oh, I thought I was a good bloke, but now I realized I'm not. And so I'm in peril and that's when they are ready. It's not until then that they can really hear the good news yeah. and be great, grateful. And so we've got this law of sin and death. But in Romans chapter 8, Paul mm. writes this. He wrote, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So does that mean that Jesus abolished a law that we said was immutable, unchangeable? Well, no, Not exactly, we couldn't no. actually do that because the law is just, mm. the law is eternal. Um, so in, in reading these verses, it's apparent that there are two different laws, two different even types of law that Paul uh, is talking about. The law of the spirit of life and the law of sin and sin death. death. Uh, he says the law of the spirit of life sets us free Mm -hmm. from the law of sin and death. So we can gather that it's better to be under that law, under the law of the Spirit. Uh, but what does that mean? Somehow this, this second law allows those under it to be released from the consequence of the first law. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is where a lot of people need to just come back to basics and understand, as, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when Paul talks about the law of sin and death, He's talking about that immutable law that God established from the beginning of time. We've, we've established right. that. Uh, in Romans 7 verse 12, Paul notes that the law itself is holy mm -hmm. and righteous mm -hmm. and good. Yes, it is. Uh, the inevitable outcome of the law uh, that, that, that God has made is sin because we never can that's right yes the law. Yeah. the law may be perfect and it is perfect but it's also impossible for us to keep <laughs> it, it perfectly especially when jesus starts saying let me just clarify you know the murder one do yeah. not murder well if you hate someone in your heart god considers that murder yeah. of the heart you know and you're going oh you know you know you know the adultery one don't commit well i'm telling you even if you lust after someone in your heart that's the same as adultery at heart so you know, he, he sort of expands it and, re and you realize pretty quickly that uh, he, the law is perfect, but it's also impossible to keep it perfect. And it's impossible because we've all inherited uh, a fallen nature yep. from our first parents. That's, that's the bottom line. Mm. Uh, and the inevitable consequence of the law uh, is sin and that brings death. And it's impossible for us to keep the law. So basically what Paul's saying is, they're in a bit of trouble. Yep. Um, this death, of course, by the way, it refers not just to physical death, no. but to separation from God. Mm. Um, we're inescapably shackled to our, to our fallen, sinful mm. nature, and we, we naturally fail to keep the law. We just can't do it. And so we, um, we, we found that the law is good in itself, but it still serves only one purpose for us, and that's to yep. sentence us to death. And that's why Paul calls it the mm. law of sin and death. Yeah. So Jesus came to earth and Paul perfectly fulfilled the law. Yeah. He remained sinless yeah. uh, and thus he wasn't subject to, to death. 
um, that death that would be imposed by the law of sin and death. Um, and then he did something that only a righteous person could do. Mm. And nobody saw it coming. Uh, yeah, that's it. He took the justly deserved punishment of the whole world on himself. Yeah. He suffered on our behalf the consequences of the law of sin and death. And in doing so, he introduced this new law, yeah. the law of the spirit of life. Yeah. Instead of the law of sin and death, pretty good alternative actually, um, the new law did not mean that the law of sin and death was abolished. In fact, if the law of sin and death was abolished, we'd have no need for the law of the spirit of life. And yeah. Jesus wouldn't have needed to come. No. Um, but what this new law did was to fulfill or satisfy the demands of the old law. Sin had to be punishment. And that punishment yeah. always was death. That was the law. No ifs or buts. It didn't measure the degree of evil, yeah. the magnitude of the sin. Whether it's a little yeah. white lie or a mass murder, in the end, the result's the same. Death. Whatever the mm -hmm. sin, the consequence is death. Some say that's not fair. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's sort of like a couple of people heading to the station to catch the four o'clock train. Um, one arrives just as the train is pulling out of the station and the other one arrives 10 minutes later. There's a lot of difference between the two. One was only a few seconds late and, and the other was 10 minutes, 10 late. minutes late. But, but they the both missed the train. The degree of lateness doesn't change the, the consequence. They missed the train. Mm. The consequence was the same for both of them. Mm. They both missed the train and sin is like that. Uh, the consequence of any sin is death and justice demands a consequence yeah. to be put into effect. So, so Christ enters the scene and he satisfies the consequence of our sin mm. by taking our place in death. So in that sense, mm. he died for us. Yeah. Now, without going too far down that track, um, this is a, a little bit of a, a theological issue for some people as well. The mm. fact that Christ died as a substitute. There, there mm. are people that say, oh, no, 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 not as a substitute. But that's exactly yeah. what happened. Well, there's those two theories of atonement, the you know, ransom yep. uh, versus the, the substitute. And the, 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 the truth is, as, as Dave said, not without going into too, too much detail theologically, uh, they're both right. Uh, he was a ransom and he was a substitute. Yeah, so. that, that's true. Um, but this law of sin and death is satisfied, yeah. not abolished but satisfied. Yeah. Now the law of, of life is able to be put into effect. So we pass from death yep. to life. So now in Christ, we're given the righteousness of God. This is one of, Beautiful. to me, one of the, my favorite concepts mm -hmm. in, in the whole of the, uh, the New Testament, that we have the righteousness of, of Christ, God's righteousness in mm -hmm. us. That means we can't mess it up because mm -hmm. it's not ours. We, yeah. we can't make God unrighteous. Absolutely. Uh, and we have his righteousness. And we have the spirit of God living yeah. within us. And because we have the spirit of life mm. in us, death has no claim right. on us. It's interesting, isn't it, Dave? Like, you, you, uh, you know, the law of sin and death, uh, the, you know, is, is that the consequence of sin is death. That's the law, and it's like the law of gravity. It can't be changed. It can't be, not, you know, even Jesus didn't abolish it. He fulfilled it. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, we as sinners, uh, or were sinners, um, and Jesus has taken out our sin. So, you know, creating saints, we become, you know, forgiven Absolutely. and saints. Um, but even, even we, spiritually speaking, have the same consequence because as Paul said, we have been crucified with Christ. Yeah. He did the dying, but we identify yeah. in his crucifixion. And I wonder, Dave, if the reason there are so many wishy-washy Christians nowadays, so many Christians that, that you know can't handle the heat, is because they never got the death bit. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't ever, they never, they never, like they were just asked, you know, who wants to go to heaven? And they all put up their hands. Well, who doesn't? You know, I'm a good bloke. I'll go to heaven. Why not? You know, and, and without realizing, oh, no, 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 no. The, 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 the consequence of sin is death. This is the law of sin and death. And you have to die. 
Like Jesus took the death, took the punishment. But if you don't identify, yeah, if you don't it. take up your cross daily, if you can't, like Paul, say, you know, my old man is gone. The new has come. I'm a new creation. You know, all those things before that I, I considered valuable, I now consider them a loss. You know, it's, it's, for it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. I have died to myself. You know, all of this, this concept that when you, when you give your heart to Christ, when you put your faith in him, you actually die to self so that you can live for Christ. Yeah. Uh, there's there's multiple verses, of course, that that, that repeat this this um, this concept over and over. That that yes, the law of sin is, is you know the law of sin and death is still at work. Not that I took my own death, Jesus did, but I identify that by laying down what I consider life and living for Him. Yep. And uh, and you know I want to encourage you if you're a Christian living to this, really consider this. Listen to it over and over. Are you truly dead to self? Is your all on the altar? Have you said, Jesus, I'm all in. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. It's not what I want anymore. It's what you want. Your will, your direction, your purpose, your values, your kingdom is my first and highest priority in life. Yep. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added, will be added to you. At, at the end of Romans 7, Paul notes... Um, the need of the gospel to mm. deliver us from the consequence of sin. Yeah. Um, he said, who will rescue me yeah. uh, from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 7.25. Mm. Um, and so when Romans 8 begins, yeah. it starts from a place of victory. Instead of being enslaved yeah. to our own self and sin and and trying and inevitably failing to fulfill the law, we have been redeemed by Christ. We're adopted mm. into God's family, as he says a little bit further in the chapter, in, in verse yeah. uh, 14. So we are no longer condemned to failure, but we live yeah. according to the law of the spirit of life. Mm. The, Interestingly, um, I'm sure you do this too. Whenever I quote, preach from, write about Romans chapter 7 at the end there, you know, who rid me of this body of death and, you know, thanks be to God through Christ. Um, I always never, I never finish it at the last verse of chapter 7. I always tack on chapter 8 there. verse 1. Yeah. You know, who will rid me of this body? Oh, wretched man that I am, you know, uh, you know, the thing I want to do, I don't do. The thing I don't want to do, this I do. Ah, you know, he's all frustrated with his flesh. And then he says, therefore, there's no condemnation and because there, I'm in Christ. There were no chapters and verses when Paul wrote. So, exactly. Um, it, it was one thought. And, um, and interestingly, you know, theologically, for those of you loving to read the Bible, hope you all do. When you see the word therefore, you should always find out what it's there for. Exactly. Yeah. So the gospel uh, makes all things new mm. for those who receive Christ. So Romans 8 begins with that declaration. There's no condemnation. Yeah. There's no judgment. To those who are in Christ, we have been released from the law of sin and death, and, and that leads to Paul rejoicing over the change that the gospel makes in the lives of those who believe in Christ. And and the chapter finishes confirming, in the strongest possible terms, mm. that believers can never be separated from that love. For I am persuaded, I am yes, convinced that, absolutely, absolutely that not. neither death nor life, and he lists all those things: angels, demons, present, future, powers, height depth, anything in creation, nothing will be able to separate mm. us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And for all you theological Thursday junkies, you remember that verse from last week. Yeah, we certainly made that one a, yeah, an important verse last week. Salvation is really the most incredible and mm. amazing gift from God. It's such a pity, I think, that so many Christians don't realise just how amazing it is. Yeah. So many still live as though they are under guilt. They, they live under the guilt yeah. of sin and, and see themselves as helpless mm. and hopeless uh, and, and just making it into heaven by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. But it's not by the skin of their teeth. It's something far greater than that. It's by the blood of Christ. Yeah. That's what gets us there. Yeah. And he didn't go to the cross to make us miserable failures, let me assure you. Yeah. He went to make us overcomers, free from guilt and able to live mm. life up Beautiful. abundantly. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? The old pendulum again. You know, yep. you've got people who think they deserve to go to heaven because, oh, I'm a good bloke, and they've never had that that revelation or that that epiphany that, oh, oh, I'm I'm 
I'm a sinner, I've broken the law. And then on the other hand, you've got people who, I'm not worthy, I never can be, um, you know, and, and, and I'm squirming like a worm. And down the middle, you have this, yes, you need the conviction that, you know, you, you do need to repent and you do need a saviour. Otherwise, you will burn in hell forever. And, but also, uh, that, that revelation that Jesus Christ is that saviour and uh, that he has made you right with God, made you righteous and made you holy. He has set you apart. And he didn't come to make you a failure. And no. that's what a lot of people still mm. walk around with, carrying that load, which, mm. um, you know, if we really appreciate mm. what the law of the spirit of life is, we would see mm. that in Christ, yeah. uh, we are overcomers. Yeah, I love that verse. I, I've mentioned it already this morning. Um, you know, the old has gone and the new has come. You know, that old guy, the old Pete, he was an idiot. He, you know, he was a failure and, you know, he, he deserved, you know, what he deserved hell. But the new guy, that was Jesus who came to live inside of me. And uh, he, he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. He, that, the new Pete, he's actually okay, you know, because it's actually Christ in me. It's, it's not me, it's Christ in me, you know. It's the old man is gone. Thank goodness for that. Good riddance. The new guy, now he's he's got the spirit of God, and uh, and he can do all things. So, well, God bless you. That's a good one. And I uh, hope you you, uh, you enjoy that. And don't forget, you know, spend some time just thanking God and 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 uh, for for your salvation, for the life, the the abundant life that Dave was just referring to. But uh, but also just you know remember, you got to take up your cross daily. You know, and, and follow him and, and live for Christ, not for self. That's the heart of being a disciple. So God bless you. Have an amazing week and we'll see you next Thursday.